What is going on guys and girls? My name is James Lothixia and welcome back today to Roblox. How doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. Today, finally, it is time for our Bee Swarm tips and tricks video for mid-game players. Has anyone seen my head? Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's one of my favorite bugs in the game. <laughs> Three, two, one, claim the hive. How are we doing, everyone? I hope you guys are good. So this one, to be honest with you, is a very, very difficult video to make. Um, and I've actually tried this maybe two or three times already. And each time, I've decided to re-record it. Now, <laughs> what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and answer... Uh, a few of the questions which I've been asked on many, many occasions to do with things roughly based around the mid-game. However, I would highly recommend if you are looking for mid-game tips and you haven't yet seen the Bee Swarm Simulator uh, Tips and Tricks for Noobs video that we made a couple of weeks ago, I would highly recommend that you go and check that one out as well. So I'll link that in the description below because essentially, even though that title, you know, the video is titled like for noobs, uh, that more means the things, the very, very basic things in the game. And I do firmly believe that even the very, very basics of stuff that we talk about in that video is still super duper important for mid game and end game players. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go a little bit more specific in this one. However, if you do want general tips, um, then yeah, everything in that video, I, I still do myself every single day and is really, really important. So that's stuff to do with vicious bees, to do with sprouts, to do with uh, fireflies, memory matches, all that stuff. Uh, and yeah, hopefully that's gonna be useful. But anyway, ooh, mid game, <laughs> this is tricky. So I'm gonna start up here with talking about the red and the blue HQ and some of the more mid tier items in the game. Um, so it's kind of difficult because what actually is a mid game player? You know, the, the mid game in this game is actually pretty broad. And I kind of think that it can be anywhere between maybe 20, 25 Bs to maybe even 35 Bs plus. Uh, that kind of general area is really, really broad. Um, and I'm going to try my best to cover as many points as possible. Now, I'm going to start sort of, I guess, early mid game. Because uh, a lot of people wonder about the blue and the red HQ and as to which items are the best items to get. Now, <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> um, there's no real right and wrong answer when it comes to that. So this is kind of what I think I'm going to base it off. Uh, now, your best friend in Bee Swarm, if you want to look at how your character is progressing, is quite simply clicking the system button and looking at your percentages. Um, so this tells you everything that you need to know about your character, and it takes into account every single bee you've got, uh, every single equipment you've got, every single amulet you've got, and it adds it up all neatly for you to take a look. And the thing is, every single person's character will likely be different, because everyone has different bees, different, no matter, different equipments, but every single, you know, combinations, some people have different gifteds, this, that, and the other. Um, but yeah, if I look at mine, I have a, a bigger white pollen. Ignore that. That's because of my, uh, you know, end game equipment and stuff like that. Uh, but if I look at my red and my blue, I can see that my red pollen is 280 and my blue pollen is 220. So I can see there that my blue pollen is lower than my red pollen. Now, here's the thing. I like to have a balanced character. And the reason for that, quite simply, is because as you are playing and you're questing and you're doing your field boosts and you're doing your wins and all that kind of stuff, you go to pretty much every single field. Um, and every single field is different. So I like to have a character that is decent in every single one of those fields. I don't like to have a character that's really, really, really good at red, but is kind of not that hot when it comes to blue. Um, so in theory, if I wanted to balance out my character, and I would kind of recommend having a balanced character, to be honest with you, um, I would know that if I go to the blue HQ, there's probably going to be better items for me in here to actually balance out those numbers. So, for example, if it comes to the porter hives, I would go for the blue porter hive because I want that extra blue pollen percentage. I feel like that's the simple way of actually working out which equipment you want. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to the masks, which is the next question that I guess that get asked a lot, <laughs> it's where it gets slightly more complicated. So there's three masks instead of two. You have the bubble mask, you have the fire mask, and then you have the honey mask. Now, here's the thing. In terms of which mask I would actually pick, whew, I would go with the honey mask. And the reason why is because I just want a mask that is straight down the middle, to be honest with you. Um, so the blue mask, I feel, is mainly based around adding up a 
an extra bit of blue pollen. So if your blue pollen is super duper low, maybe you would want to go for that one. Uh, the red one, I kind of see as more of a damaging mask. So I see this as more of like the baby demon mask uh, because of the two plus red B attack. And actually, this was a really good mask if you want to increase your stick bug score, increase your ant challenge, maybe do some more damage to the stump snail. Although I would highly recommend having the vicious bee before you even try to do the stump snail. Um, but yeah, out of the three masks, I would probably just go for the honey mask inside here. It's the same price, albeit different crafting materials, but it just gives you a more general mask, which is pretty much straight down the middle. So out of those three masks, which one is the best? All of them are good. For me personally, I would go with the uh, either the blue one or the honey one. Now, I know that's probably not the most useful thing to say. It's kind of up to you, but... The thing is, everyone's stats is going to be different, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's very, very difficult to even, um, you know, recommend something because I don't know every single person's character. But what I would recommend is definitely take a look at your percentages, see what your lowest ones are, see what your highest ones are, and then base the equipment that you pick off those. I would recommend, as I said, to try and go for a balanced character if possible, to try and get your numbers all close to each other, because I think overall, it's going to benefit fit you in the long run. So I guess this is kind of more for slightly higher mid-game players because we do have the mountaintop shop and then we do have the extra items inside the ace place in the sprinkler shop and that's to do you know with the the, the best uh, shoulder pieces and you've got like the, the the belt as well all that kind of stuff um but yeah I, I also get asked about collectors now, to be honest, this one is also kind of tricky, um, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but out of all of the collectors, in general, I like to have a collector that has a larger area of collection. Uh, this is quite simply because, one, it just covers more of the field. Two, it makes it easier for you to get um, leaves in the fields, which gives you a, a higher chance of getting aphids. Uh, and three, it makes it a little bit easier to do your, your sparkles, uh, you know, maybe from your fireflies or, or you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so in terms in terms of which collection item is best, <laughs> out of the rake or the spark staff, hmm, probably the spark staff, it probably collects a bit quicker, it probably gives you more pollen, but I would probably go for the golden rake, I would skip the spark staff, and then I would save up for the porcelain dipper. I think the porcelain dipper is a great collector, I used this for so, so long, and I really do think this is one of the end game goal items for a mid game player. So yeah, this, this porcelain dip is incredible. I know it's it's the most expensive out of the mid-game ones, um, but yeah. The spark stuff is cool, but I just like having a bigger area. I feel like that's beneficial. Side note, I talked about it in the, the noobs video. Always do your sprouts. Always do your sprouts. Even your green sprouts. You may be seeing a green sprout pop up and you're kind of like, oh, it's a green sprout again. Why? Do them, do them, do them, do them. Because... You can quite easily get somewhere between like 20 to 25 of the same item. If you do two sprouts, that means you get 50, and then 50 goes into the blender, and it means you've basically got yourself an extra advanced crafting item. So yeah, always do your sprouts, even if it's a green one. Go and do them. They all add up. Right, next up, we're going to talk about the actual beehive itself. Now, once again, this is an area where every single one's hive is just, you know, completely different for the most part. Um, and I feel like if it's a mid-game player, you're probably going to have, you're going to have slightly less slots than this, but you're probably going to have maybe, mm, I'm going to say in general, maybe two or three or four gifted bees. Uh, and then you're also going to have some random duplicates um, of just various bees. And you might have picked a few bees that you quite like to have duplicates of. So in terms of like duplicates and things, there are some duplicates that are better to have than others. Um, so for example, if possible, I would always recommend having multiple rage bees. Uh, this is mainly for the ant challenge and for doing extra damage. Um, but yeah, if you've got a limited amount of slots, then maybe just even having two rage bees is quite nice. That gives you a, a two uh, rage stack, which is kind of good. In terms of bees that are good to be duplicated, uh, the, the legendary bees are obviously good. But you do want a mixture of all of the various tokens. You know, you want bees that are going to give you red boosts and blue boosts, uh, red bombs, blue bombs, focus, melody. You're going to want all of that happening all at once. Um, so in terms of just some random bees that are good to have a duplicate of, duplicate diamond bees, extra conversion rate, that's kind of nice. Uh, shy bee is very good. I really like the shy bee. It gives you red boost and red bomb. Um, so boost tokens are very important. Uh, I do like to have a mixture of those. However, 
to be honest with you, that's kind of all subjective because you are going to want to try and get as many gifted bees as possible. Gifted bees are amazing because they do incredible gifted abilities, although it may not seem like much, they all start to add up to really benefit your character. Now here's the big question, the ultimate question, how do I get gifted bees? This is so expensive. The answer is yeah, it is, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, now, there are like three ways that you could do this. Also, side note, look, I'm grabbing my sparkles. Always grab your sparkles, lads. <laughs> they, uh, they give you really good items. Yeah, so um, you kind of want to... Um, you kind of want to do it in three ways, basically. You've got one, which is the royal jelly method. You've got two, which is the special uh, treat method. Or you've got three, which is the star jelly method. So in terms of percentages, you have a one in 250 chance of a bee turning, not turning gifted, being gifted from using uh, royal jelly. It will be any of the gifted bees. It's completely random. If you use special treats, so strawberries, pineapples, that kind of stuff, you have a 1 in 12,000 chance of that individual bee turning gifted. Obviously, the bee needs to love the treat in order for that to happen. Uh, and if you use star jelly, obviously, it will give you a random one. Um, so yeah, out of those three options, you're going to want to be saving your ingredients. So for sure, you could maybe go to the blender and if you've got a few ingredients, maybe try and make a couple of star jellies here and there. Don't forget as well that you do get star jellies occasionally as quest rewards from your daily quests. Um, so brown bear, uh, I think black bear maybe, but I definitely got one from brown bear before. Quite rare, but you do get them. Um, and then yeah, you've got the royal jelly. So here's the thing. I would recommend trying the royal jelly method and I would try it out and see if you like it. So it's quite simple. In order to do the royal jelly method, you use this bad boy. You don't have to. You can just save up royal jellies from quests and, 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 and uh, sparkles and stick bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is how I did it. So in theory, you've got a 1 in 250 chance of getting a gifted bee. Now, how I did it was I look at my backpack size. And this is what I did back in the day. And I don't know what your backpack size is, but I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe 4 million, 5 million, something like that. I know that every single time I would fill up that backpack, I would be able to afford 4 to 5 to 6 royal jellies. Now, <laughs> I would try and then build up about 500 royal jellies and then use them all at once on one single hive slot to see if I could get a gifted bee. So that I will be honest with you, there were some times when I used like five, six, seven hundred royal jellies and we didn't get a single gifted bee. But <laughs> there were times, and these are on my channel, where we used a similar amount and we got like seven or eight gifted bees. Now, some of those were duplicates, but essentially what I was doing was every single time I got a gifted bee that I wanted, I would then move on to another slot and then start royal gelling again to try and get a different gifted bee. Out of those three things, I would highly recommend trying the bulk royal jelly method. I know it's expensive, it might take some time to save up, but look at your backpack size, work out how much you get per trip, and then try and save up and see what you can do. It's difficult, it can be frustrating, but it can be done, and that's how I did it. I used bulk royal jelly in order to actually get gifted bees. Now, don't forget as well, I did mention this in the uh, the noobs video, but it's all well and good getting gifted bees and stuff, but the badges are just as important. They, they are 100% just as important. So um, take a look at your badges, see what you're close to getting, see what you're not close to getting, uh, and then maybe try and work on these via field boosters. So field boosters is something that we're gonna talk about. People always wonder like, how, how do you make honey so fast? How do your numbers go up so fast and stuff? It's literally because I played for so long. I have lots of gifted bees. I have an awful lot as well. Now you've got to remember as well, I have polar power. Polar power is very important because it means your bees have more energy and they stay in the field for longer. Um, so daily quest rewards, we mentioned that in the previous video, do the daily quest rewards, do your polar bear, do your brown bear, do your black bear as often as possible because they all help. But um, yeah, don't sleep on the badges. The badges are really important. Um, so yeah, take a look what you need, take a look what you're close to, take a look what you're far away from, uh, and then yeah, combine those with field boosters in order to actually generate honey faster. Side note as well, don't forget about your daily uh, spike bonus. Um, if you don't have a vicious bee yet, I would highly, 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 highly recommend starting to save up your stingers. Uh, the vicious bee really opens up the door to being able to take down bosses very quickly. It opens up the door to better stick bug scores, better ant challenge scores. 
uh, easier to take down the snail a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, always, always, always try and find the spike. So yeah, I was talking about field boosts just then. And um, the, the, the question that I guess that I like asked a lot is, how do I make more honey quicker? And to be honest, there's no golden rule uh, when it comes to that. But you've got to remember that your field boosters, they now generate once every single hour. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can do this, really. I mean, you can just straight up go and grind in fields, uh, which I don't think is necessarily the best way of doing it. Or you can actually try and combine your grinding with boosting your fields and also perhaps some quests that you're doing on in the background. Um, so yeah, always use your field boosters as often as possible. Um, they really, really, really do help. And I'm kind of hoping that there will be people who uh, actually have availability here into the 35b zone so this is one thing that i've been messing around with recently and i actually think it's it's kind of amazing um especially for mid-game players if you can get into the 35b zone i completely get it you've got to spend money to get in here because there's a lot of bees that you have to buy slots for i i get it but just as a side note if you can get into here experiment with using small donations so for example here i'm going to donate a single ticket and look at this i get boosts so from a single ticket, I have Pine Tree 2, Pineapple 2, and Strawberry 1. So what I could do now is I could go and hit my top field booster, and maybe I could get a Pineapple. If I don't, I could maybe go to my blue one, and I could see if I can get a Pine. And then I know that I'm going to get a booster and a wins for pretty cheap, to be honest, like one single ticket. And then I can use that for 15 minutes to make honey quicker. So yeah, small donations to the Wind Shrine actually really, really, really help. And uh, yeah, just experiment it with it. You know, give random cheap items to the Wind Shrine. Unfortunately, then I didn't actually get anything that I needed. But experiment with it, like five strawberries or a single ticket or something. You can do it once every hour. You might as well. So, I feel like we should actually talk about the Wind Shrine as well. Uh, this still kind of confuses people. Um because it's kind of like one of the more mysterious elements of, of Bee Swarm. Um, <laughs> and obviously, there's a lot of people who are working towards getting their Windy Bee. So to be honest with you, Windy Bee is an amazing bee. Uh, but you do have to put a bit of groundwork in before you actually get it. Um, so this is, I guess, slightly more advanced mid game this is maybe moving slightly towards the end game but i didn't mention it previously so i think it's kind of interesting to talk about it um but yeah in order to actually get the windy bee one you first need to get the spirit petal from the spirit bear now you will get a spirit petal on quest number 10 quest number 20 and quest number 30 um so if you do want that windy bee which i would really recommend trying to do the order that i would do if you didn't buy it for robux is i would do spirit petal first into the wind shrine i would do the backpack second and then i would do the collector third yes that's what i want to do that's the order that i would pick um so yeah once you have donated your uh spirit petal to the wind shrine that then unlocks the ability to get the windy bee but you still need to do extra donations in order to get it so the item that you need to donate is cloud vials now you gain cloud vials from windy bees in the wild um and yeah the number <laughs> people always wonder like how many cloud vials do i actually have to donate to give get the windy bee um to be honest with you i've seen anywhere between like 250 to like 500 plus um this is a lot of cloud vials uh, but you've got to remember there is another stat going on in the background uh, which is your favor now your favor can be raised not only by donating cloud vials but also by donating different items um so yeah you can also donate other things of value Every single thing that you donate raises your favor, but you could donate things like extra eggs that you might not be using, uh, or you might just have random eggs like I do. So things like baby bee eggs and rascal bee eggs and all that kind of stuff. You can donate tickets, you can donate treats, whatever you want. But the more stuff you donate to the Wind Shrine, the higher your favor goes. Uh, but you do need to donate the Cloud Vials in order to actually get the Windy Bee. So maybe do it in batches of 10. I did kind of want to talk about the cloud vials and stuff just because people do wonder how many you actually have to donate. The answer is a lot, <laughs> to be honest with you, it's a lot. Um, but yeah, I've seen between maybe 250 to 500 plus. It really depends on what your favor is and how lucky you are. So yeah, if, if possible, you know, donate something every single hour. Experiment with small donations, occasionally maybe give an egg, try and get some nice wins, uh, save up your, your cloud vials. It doesn't matter how many, you know, 
times you donate. Like, you don't have to donate a 10 stack every time, but I guess that's easier in theory. So yeah, I guess like if I had like a, a grand plan for mid-game play, you know, it's very, very difficult as I've said because everyone plays the game differently, everyone has different stats, everyone's at different stages, um, but I kind of feel like generally having a mixture of one, using your 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 uh, special treats in the blender to slowly build up your reserves of your uh, advanced crafting materials i feel like that's important i wouldn't necessarily just pump every straw where you get straight into a red bee i don't think that's the best way of doing it i feel like making it into extracts is more beneficial in the long run um i would also be looking to stack up royal jelly and using them in stacks to try and gain gifted bees um and yeah i would recommend maybe trying to buy that royal jelly with this machine uh, but that all really depends on how much time you're willing to actually grind out those fields, to be honest with you. So always make sure you use your field boosters. Try and get that one times, two times, three times. Look at the size of your backpack. Think about how many trips you would need to make. Also, make sure you don't forget about the codes. Um, the codes which come out are really, really good. If you're subscribed to the channel, you'll know that we do a video every single time a code comes out. Uh, never just claim a code and just get the items and leave it. You know, Always try and do those boosts because they are very beneficial no matter what level you are. And you will gain extra honey from simply just grinding it out for like 15 minutes. As I mentioned as well, of course, the Tunnel Bear and the King Beetle, amazing sources of uh, free items, especially advanced crafting items. As I kind of always mention there, just boost your loot luck up with a baby love token, jump in, see what you can do. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on the timers of those uh, and realize that, you know, King Beetle spawns once every one day, uh, Tunnel Bear once every two days. So, you know, keep your eye on the timers, uh, you know, see when they're actually back and make sure you do them as quickly as you possibly can after to give yourself the best chance at gaining as many free items as you can as quickly as you can. And finally, I guess this is the only real point that I don't think I've covered throughout the three videos um, in, in too much detail anyway. Uh, always look at your amulets. Amulets are very important. They're, they're very nice to kind of, you know, boost up your character. Um, so yeah, you can get an amulet from the King Beetle. Uh, quite rare, but you do get one. So if you don't have one of those yet, make sure you keep killing the King Beetle. Try and get your King Beetle amulet. Um, don't sleep on this guy as well. This is the Moon Charms. Um, so this caps out at 250,000 extra storage, but it also does give you two or three, maybe even just random boosts. Um, so always make sure when nighttime comes, you go and uh, collect your sparkles uh, to get your moons. Uh, you know, if possible, go and take down those moon sprouts. Um, and yeah, see if you can actually get a capped out moon amulet. Obviously with every other thing, it really depends on how much damage you can do for the other amulets and how much honey you've saved up. Um, so if you can get yourself a star amulet, I think the first one is after five gifted bees. Uh, I would highly recommend trying to get one of your star amulets as soon as possible. Stick bug is a little bit trickier. That's probably best on a serve with higher level people. Um, so you can actually get like a bit of a score. Um, but yeah, that's kind of more... I think we've covered those in the other videos. Um, See, so yeah, I don't know what else I really want to say in this mid-game one. This is, a, as I mentioned, this is a really hard video to make. Um, it's so subjective with, with what everyone is doing. <laughs> Um, and I feel like I've covered everything over the course of the three videos. Um, so if you haven't seen those two other videos yet, please do make sure you, you go and check those out. I might have answered a question that you have in that one. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please remember to put me in that like button. And if you are not yet subscribed, go for it because we do Roblox done fun. But until next time, thank you once again for watching. It's been such a pleasure. As always, thanks. And see ya.